In the midst of the worst recruiting crisis since the Vietnam War, the Army has pumped enlistment bonuses up to record numbers. They temporarily and unsuccessfully admitted recruits without high school diplomas or GEDs. They even let soldiers continue to serve who refused mandated vaccinations after promising to boot them out for noncompliance. But now, the Army is rolling out perhaps its most aggressive tactic yet. A 90-day, pre-basic training prep course for Army hopefuls who are underqualified for enlistment due to either body fat or mental aptitude. Anyone within 6% of their maximum allowable body fat or within 10 points of the minimum Armed Forces qualification test scores are allowed to participate, during which they will be given rank and a paycheck by the Army. Knowledge, ability, and experience are the three things that you need to really be successful. And if you have a lot of experience in the military, but none in the civilian world, all you need is just the tools to transfer. And so that's what we focus on at Covered Six, is we created the first ever kind of vocational college for the security industry, where it's not where you have to just kind of wing it, not just executive protection, but holistically through technology, mm. technology integration, cyber, uh, physical security, and now what I'm really excited about is private fire. You'd have never thought people were like, you could become a firefighter and a security officer because we have all these, these issues here on the West Coast, five states dealing with fire problems. Yeah. You know, of course, throughout my career, I experienced other instances where I had to avoid sexual advances and sexual um, harassment. So uh, it's tough. I, I think, you know, one of the things I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to help raise awareness. Like, just don't let your guard down. Um, don't put so much trust into everyone around you is going to protect you and keep you safe because you just don't know what someone's intentions are. And the military, the military is just made up of a lot of civilians who come in with their own baggage, their own morals, their own beliefs. And so you just don't know who you're serving beside. No. Scott, my kidney donor, guy is a total stud. Uh, he was a Joint Special Operations Command combat controller, and then he became a PJ, and he's also a physician's assistant now for a state prison. <laughs> so he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's locked on. Uh, great guy, total warrior. I think that also speaks volumes about the, the veteran, the military community, whether it's, you know, active or veteran. It's uh, a brotherhood. It's a brotherhood. You know, I wouldn't hesitate to if any of my brothers like reached out and they needed me for whatever reason, even just to talk, you know, I'm there. When I got back from Afghanistan and all the younger enlisted were there, we, we were awful to, to them. We just came back salty. We were like, we got to prepare these guys. They're going to go to war. Uh, they might get shot. And so when we would be out at the, the training range or, or the rifle range, <laughs> we had the, the brass and ammo pickup, and we were making them all like comb through the grass like lawnmowers <laughs> and making the noise. Did you make the noise? Yeah, yeah, they had to make the noise, and then we'd just smoke them for no reason. Yeah. And really, that harshness had purpose because we wanted to train them that life isn't fair, and especially in war, it's not fair. And you've got to develop some thick skin. And out of that, when we did go to combat, and eventually I ended up in Ramadi, Iraq during the surge from 2006 to 2007. Um, man, they performed and they did a really, really good job. And even the ones that we thought were just utter morons ended up uh, really being better soldiers while they were overseas. See, and who says that hazing doesn't have a place in the military? Hey, if the house can't haze, let it blaze. <laughs> <laughs> Freeze it! Ah!